Good day, Good folks. Day. Mabuhay from the Philippines and hola to everyone in Spain and around the world. I am Angela Lorenzo, a Filipino writer and an incoming auxiliar de conversación or language and culture assistant bound for Spain in the school year 2022 to 2023. This is the Ox Talks, Conversations with Language and Culture Assistance in Spain. The Language and Culture Assistance Program is a program of Spain's Ministry of Education where they invite people from different countries in the world to assist Spanish educators in guiding their brilliant students for the mastery and appreciation of the English language. As a first-time auxiliar, I thought of coming up with a show that can be used as an informational resource for people who are interested to take part in the program. What better way to learn about the program than to hear from the people who have actually experienced it themselves? Today, we welcome Clarice, a language assistant assigned in the Galician region. So thank you so much for accepting my invitation, Clarice, and we welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you also, Angelo, for this um opportunity to be interviewed by you. At the same time, it is my pleasure, at the same time, my privilege to share my experience and all the things I encountered here in Spain as an auxiliar. At the same time, all my all the things that I contributed to my to the school where I was last school year. So that's amazing. Hola a todos and y todas to everyone <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, i think it's it's morning there at your uh, i mean it's afternoon there at your time i uh, so buenas um taan tardes yeah. i guess <laughs> i'm still learning my spanish though but yeah buenas yeah, tardes buenas tardes sí. <laughs> buenas tardes <laughs> so yeah um jumping ahead uh Clarice, what were you my first question would be what would be uh what were you doing before you participated in the language and culture assistance program? What was your career and where were you connected to? Okay, so uh, before I participated in this language and culture assistance program, I was a high school English teacher in one of the prestige schools in Iligan City. So I was connected to La Salle Academy they are the sister schools of uh university la salle university yes in manila or in any parts of of the philippines at the same time i was a grade eight advisor for two years and a grade nine advisor for one year so i handled all of those levels and at the same time i was the school paper advisor for at the high school level so i spent the first three years of my career practicing my profession before I joined the program. That's amazing. So you do have like an extensive background in teaching and that's amazing because you were able to apply those skills in uh, your uh, obligations and duties as a language and culture assistant. So can you share about how did you hear um, about the program, Clarice? Okay, so... Um, when I was in my senior year in college, mm -hmm. uh, the director of the Office of International Cooperation and Networking, or known as OICN, of the mm -hmm. university where I graduated, invited us to a talk regarding this program in Spain and informed us that my alma mater, which is Xavier University Ateneo de Cagayan, is one of the partner schools of this program. So... Uh, the director presented to us what the program is all about. And then it really gave us a lot of things also, aside from the experiences. So upon hearing all of those things, it fascinated me. At the same time, it caught my attention and interest. And that's the reason why I applied in this program. That's so amazing. So I believe that you really deserve um, this opportunity and you were able to explore the world through the program. And um, I would like to ask, Therese, uh, since you have had an, a really great experience uh, with your uh, students in the Philippines and also an extensive background in teaching and also your um, uh, qualities in, in education, um, how is your experience with the program? What do you think about it and what are your perceptions about it? 
Okay, so my experience with the, with the program is not actually a walk in the park. I tell you, it's not really a walk in the park. So at first, I was nervous since it was my first time going abroad and assisting and teaching foreign students. So I am used to be in the Philippines all, uh, in all my life since I graduated from college. And there was this one experience that I won't really forget. Like up until now, I can still remember the every details in it. And uh, this experience was when I lost my way going to the house of the person I carpooled with. And my phone was, my phone at that time was not working it was not working because it was a fingerprint lock. So I need to have my thumb and my phone couldn't read my thumb because of the numbness caused by the cold weather. So I arrived here last year, September, and that is already, um, what you call this one, autumn. It's already the season of autumn. So it's getting, it's getting cold and my body is not used to the weather because it's still my first time so that's it and so because my my thumb it doesn't read my my fingerprint on my phone i started to panic and i cried i literally cried on the road like <laughs> that's it and even though despite of these things that happened to me it was a good thing that the person i carpooled with called me so but the problem here is she doesn't speak English at all. So aside from that is the language barrier. That is one of my struggle before. And I think up until now, it's still my struggle. But compared last time or compared in my, compared when I was, it is still my first time here. At this moment, I can say that there is an improvement with my Spanish. I can talk in Spanish, but only in a little way. <laughs> That's it. So, um, but then the problem again is the the person I carpooled with don't speak English at all. So, she, from what I understood over the phone, she told me to call over her son for a moment so she would understand me. So that experience was actually an unforgettable moment I had when I first arrived here in Spain. And the language barrier, again, is also a big challenge for me because most teachers in the school where I was assigned don't speak English. So there are only three or four people in my school who only speaks English, and that includes my coordinator, my English coordinator. So overall, this experience gave me a room for improvement at the same time development. So while I was away from the Philippines and I am here, I was able to I was able to discover things that I wasn't able to discover when I was in the Philippines. That's amazing. What a journey, Clarice. And I think that um, you know, those experience, <laughs> the, those those experiences, those challenges that you were able to overcome have also prepared you to become a great teacher that you are now. And it's amazing. So um, you mentioned about um, the like ability to speak Spanish. So if it would be okay, if you don't mind, can mm -hmm. you uh, give us an example <laughs> or a phrase or a statement that uh, you can think of that okay. uh, you, you, know, you can share to our viewers and listeners? <laughs> oh, sure thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to, to share to you on how to introduce myself. Mm -hmm. Um, in Spanish, so amazing. Hola, hola, todos, eh, todas, ¿qué tal? Yo soy Clarice Guigge, eh, tengo 23 años. Um, that's it. <laughs> oh, that's that's a... all, some of the phrases I know, yes. That's but great. if I am going to talk with uh, with with Spanish people or mm -hmm. with Gallegos, I can I can talk in a slow in a slow mode uh, <laughs> as yeah. long as I understand what they're trying to right. say. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. We, we all we all start somewhere, and I believe that that that's already a very good um like from what I I was hearing when you speak about it. It, it feels like you're already an affluent speaker. So <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Oh, no. <laughs> so yeah, um, moving on with the uh, next question, Clarice. Um, so 
what were some of the activities that uh, you did for your students as an as an uh, language as an educator and also as a language assistant? Okay, so here's the catch. So last school year, I was assigned to a CEIP school. So when you say CEIP, it is a primary school. So I work with the infants and primary students, infantiles from four years old to five years old, grades one to grade six. And I am the only auxiliary in that school. Okay, so... So some activities that I did for, for the students in the class were the first was that I taught them the chant. So the chant I taught to them is what I also used when I was a teacher in the Philippines for three years. Like all of my students in the Philippines in La Sala Academy do really know this chant. And this chant, every time that they here, uh, heard about it, they're going to say, oh, that's Mam Clarice chant. They, they, they taught us about, uh, they taught us that chant, that one. So the chant is, if I am going to say, uh, what's the challenge for today? The students are going to answer, seize the day. That's it. So that's the chant. That's the first thing I taught to them. So the second was when, was that I talk about the Philippines. So uh, my coordinator gave me uh, an, a tie for me to introduce myself to uh, what you call this, to present what is in the Philippines, what my life is in the Philippines. That's it. And the third one also is, I also presented to them on how we celebrated Christmas. And they were so amazed on how we celebrate our Christmas because imagine... We start to create everything in September. As September starts, we start to decorate. And they were so amazed by it. Like, what? You already started your Christmas at September here? We started it in December. <laughs> so something like that. There's really a difference. And here to spend my Christmas here in, in Spain. And mm -hmm. I can totally say that um, the way people celebrate uh, their Christmas here is really different and far from how we celebrate our Christmas. And actually, right now, I really miss, I really miss the spirit of Christmas in the Philippines. <laughs> so yeah. I wish I could go home this December. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it because I believe you're in good hands there. And uh, basically, you're yeah. with with Filipino Filipinos as well. So um, there's always a family mm -hmm. in, in every place uh, you you visit and don't worry because once once i get there maybe we can you know gather um a lot of like filipino auxiliars as well and we can celebrate yes, christmas sure <laughs> so looking forward <laughs> can't to wait it, can't wait to have that <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so that's it's amazing how uh, you were able to give them a really diverse um exercises and practices for uh their english speaking skills and um, let's talk about uh, the region where you're based and where you're assigned to. Um, what is life like in the region that you're um, that, that that you've chosen, and what led you to choose that region? So in this case, it's it's Galicia, and I believe that um, it's yeah. also cold, much colder in Galicia compared to other regions in Spain. Okay, so uh, for the information of everyone. Galicia is known to be a region in which its weather is really unpredictable. So let's say, for example, right now, it's raining. In few minutes, it's going to be sunny. In few minutes, it's going to be foggy. In few minutes, it's going, it's going to change every minute, every second, every hour. So the weather here is really unpredictable. However... Um, upon the selection of the regions, so Madrid is actually at the top of the list. Like most Filipinos tend to choose Madrid over other regions in Spain. So I and my friend actually, uh, I and my friend knew that a lot of Filipinos during in during at our in our batch chose Madrid. So, uh, and when you say Madrid, it's a city life. So there are a lot of parties. There are a lot of there are a lot of malls. There are a lot of things to do in Madrid. So we decided to explore other regions, especially a region that I had never heard of before, and that is not that well known. 
but has good pay and a quality and peaceful life. So what I am after here in Spain is a quality and peaceful life. Yes, I admit when I was still in the Philippines, I go to party, but not always, very occasionally. <laughs> so so when I when I plan to go abroad, when I plan to go here, I ask, I my goal is to find a region or to find a place that has tranquility. So very calm. And there is really a quality of life. At the same time, life in Galicia is very calm and peaceful, as what I said. So the people here are so good. And the way they speak is like they're singing. The way that they speak is amazing. in Spanish. The way they speak, yes, the way they speak in, in Gallego, they're like, they're singing. It's like that in in, in Filipino, like, Hoy, okay ka lang. Mga ganyan. Like, with that rhyme. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's very calm. That's it. And and because of that, so, uh, they speak not Spanish here, actually, in Galicia. So, they also speak Gallego. And I learned few words about, a few words of Gallego. Yes. So, I am slowly learning it. And I often actually juggle the language with the other languages. So, Spanish, Gallego, English. I even talk to them unconsciously in in Cebuano or in Tagalog because of the <laughs> yeah. a lot of languages. Yes, it, it's an yes, advantage to it. be so, multilingual. So, <laughs> yes, actually, but at the same time, it it makes you confused on which language <laughs> right. are you going to use. Mm-hmm. If you're a multilingual, yes. So. <laughs> Uh, whenever they encounter people, people here in Galicia, whenever they encounter people from different countries or tourists, they are so open to helping and sharing their culture and traditions. So at the same time, I really learned a lot of things in this region and I also met a lot of people from different countries. So I can say that they are really open because my stay here in uh, in Oporinu did really... I really learn a lot from them, from their traditions and the way that they the way that they live their life. So it's really an amazing region. That's so good. And yeah, one factor that for, for our future um auxiliars to to consider is also the, the livability of the region. And yeah. I believe that uh all regions in Spain are like basically unique on their own. And yeah, this, it's uh, one thing that, that makes Galicia unique for you is, um, yeah, they have their own language as well. And then they, uh, the people are, are warm and welcoming and very hospitable. And it's, it's a great experience that you were able to go through that kind of like culture and community. So um, my next question, Paris, would be, um, I, I think that you've answered my my next question already. Like, what makes the region unique? So, um, it's the Gallego language. But, um, if if you have if you have something to add, um, uh, is there anything else? Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. So I okay. So your question was, what makes the region unique, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Was that it? Yeah, okay, yeah. So I, I think I think you, you were not able to ask that question. Oh yeah. Yet. <laughs> okay. So that's okay, why so, I was, okay. Uh yeah, let, let's go on with uh yeah uh with uh what makes uh yeah Galicia unique and basically uh we, we would love to hear from you because uh the, you've you've experienced it firsthand. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh having resided here in Galicia for a year at the same time choosing for my second year. So I plan to still renew in the same in the same region for the next school year. So I still chose this region. And what makes this region very unique is its beaches. There are a lot of beaches here. So whenever you go, there is the beach. Aside from beaches, uh, are there ruins? There are a lot of historical places here. So they have this what they call the Hercules Tower that is, uh, that is in uh, Coruña. Yes, they have That's the Hercules amazing. Tower here, <laughs> and as it at this, exactly, it's really amazing. But I haven't been there before, so I plan to go there soon. <laughs> <laughs> so they also have again historical places, museums, and mountains, food. Galicia is very known with pulpo. Pulpo is the octopus. There are a lot of seafoods here, yeah. So that must taste really, really delicious. Really, uh, <laughs> a good, a good thing. 
Yes, very. <laughs> and when you arrive here, you should try pulpo, okay? Oh, really? I'm looking forward so, to it. <laughs> yes, because it's really good, I tell you, really good. <laughs> and aside from food that they have is also their well-known wines. They have a lot of wines here. So they have this uh place what they call Ribera. It, it is where they where they get their wine in Ribera Sacra. So that's it. And one well-known place is also is what they call Santiago de Compostela. I don't know if you've heard about it, but this ah. is where a lot of people from all over the world do the Camino de Santiago. In English, it is a way of St. James. So the pilgrims are going to have a walk approximately 930 kilometers, depending on which route you're going to choose. Okay, so we have the, the French route, the Portuguese route, etc. So it depends with the route that they're going to choose, which leads them to the shrine of the apostle of St. James the Great in the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela. So okay. this is one so of the pilgrimage in Galicia. Mm -hmm. Yes, a pilgrimage. And I, I, I've I, done this one last May together with my school. And it's really an amazing experience, I tell wow. you. Mm -hmm. And this, this cathedral, there is a specific a specific door that they're just going to open it during the Shacobego year. So if if I'm not mistaken, if if the 25th, the Ju uh, 25th of July is in a third on a third Sunday, they're going to open it. But if not, they're not going to open it. So you have to wait when will be the 25th of July is going to be on Sunday. So they're going to close the Shaco Bayo this coming December 31st. So that's the last day of Shaco Bayo. So when you arrive here, grab the chance to have the pilgrimage. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> so, yeah, that's really yeah, something that's that we can we can go together and um like have a spiritual mm -hmm. journey because if there's one thing that Spanish yes. people and Filipino people have in common it's our devotion <laughs> to to god and to uh yeah. exactly <laughs> and this is also a way for you to meet other people from other countries such as Aust uh, australia from ukraine okay. from argentina wow. mm -hmm. or in any part in any other parts of the world because they it, really do this kind of activity it's really diverse no <laughs> amazing Yes, very diverse. <laughs> so um, my next question, Clarice, would be, um, what are you looking forward to uh, in the next school year? Okay, so for the next school year, I am looking forward to more and new experiences to discover. Especially since by the next school year, I am assigned to secondary school. So I'm not already with a primary school. So I am already in a secondary school this coming school year. And at the same time, I also look forward to meeting new people and improving my Spanish. I really have to improve my Spanish in order to communicate well with other people, especially if, um, at the same time, I also look forward to getting lost again on my way to school. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so I think it's really <laughs> yes. it, it's actually, um, I am really looking forward to have another experience of getting lost on my way to school. But the the uh but the the thing that is not new already is this time my phone is going to work yeah. not similar before <laughs> that it's not working because i already know the trick if your thumb yeah or your fingerprint is not working on your phone and, and it's get getting cold all you have to do is just to rub your thumb on your forehead and oh. put it on your phone so i already know the trick <laughs> so that's is. a good tip <laughs> We know how to like do this, and then we'll just um yes. like so, do it when when uh, technical difficulties happen. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So every time that your hand is cold, and mm -hmm. if your phone is a fingerprint lock, all you have to do is just to rub your finger on your forehead because there's an oil something or anything. I don't know what what explanation it is, but. <laughs> It's actually a, a a great thing. It's working all all the time. It's an effective, yeah, effective solution. <laughs> but yeah, um, it is. Uh, my last question, uh, Clara, it would be, uh, what is your advice for incoming auxiliars? Um, I I hear that um they have open calls every uh like August. I I remember last year I 
sent my application um, also this time of the year. And right here, like, like right now, I'm just looking forward to going there in, in September. And like, uh, I'm just waiting for September to happen so that I can, I, I'm, I'm actually assigned in uh, Valentia right now. And uh, like Valentia, but I, I, I'm, I'm down there for uh, September and I'm looking forward to meeting the school and the teachers there. So um, yeah, what is your advice for, for us who are, who are still on our way there and for uh, people generally, people who are uh, interested in in participating in the program. Okay, so for the incoming auxiliary, what I what I can advise is to expect the unexpected. Okay, so again, your experience here is not just a walk in the park, like a fairy tale. Now, oh, I am here. I am going to have a, a good life. No, it's not it. Yes. Life in Europe is really good, but it's not it's not really a work in the park, okay? So the experience that awaits you here, again, it's not a work in the park. And in the long run, we may have different encounters, but never hesitate to reach out to anyone, especially people from your school and from your community. So open your doors to different opportunities and possibilities that will come and may come to your way. Lastly, make the most of your journey and stay here in Spain because whenever when uh whenever you like it or not, you will always encounter difficulties upon arriving here in Spain and in the long run also you're going to encounter difficulties. So, I want you to the incoming auxiliars, I want you to have a strong heart, have courage because Spain is really going to challenge you at the same time, is really going to break you. So Spain is going to see of how strong you are, and I can attest to that, seriously. <laughs> so that's it. Just be strong and never hesitate to, to ask for help to anyone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a real, uh, a very good advice, uh, Clarice, and uh, it's it's a very um like insightful advice because it's based on your experience and basically um for us it it's it's uh, applicable for uh getting out of our comfort zone in order to grow as a as an individual and as a person who is is passionate about what we do and that is um in the line with education in the line of um uh meeting new yes. people and uh, basically exploring the world because that's what matters most is to enjoy life and to meet people and to build opportunities so that others can also thrive at the same time. So thank you so much, Clarice. And, and um, yeah, I have an, I have an additional, uh, I have an additional, uh, what do you call this one? Yeah, advice sure. to mm -hmm. the incoming auxiliars. Do not, do not bring summer dresses, okay? Do not bring <laughs> summer clothes because mm -hmm. when you arrive here, it's already the start of cold season. So always <laughs> take clothes and a lot of jackets and a lot of things because all the way from September to what I call it, all the way from September to I think March or, mm -hmm. or January or February, you're really going to have a lot of things. You're really mm -hmm. going to wear a lot of things. Oh, so that's my layering. that's also my yeah. advice to you. Do not <laughs> wear thin, do not bring any thin clothes because mm -hmm. summer is already just a short, short time, yes. period of time. Yeah. That's so <laughs> yeah, um definitely Spain is a, a very um like sometimes it gets really cold, so it's it's best to uh prepare uh, our clothes once we get there because mo uh, most of the time the program starts in uh October and then that's gonna be um okay. preluding that's to already winter. cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thank that's you so much. Cold. That month for... is already cold. Yeah. <laughs> so thank and you I so am really much. looking yeah. forward to meet all of you here in Spain. So hopefully yeah. <laughs> we, can, we can meet when you arrive here. So maybe we can meet in Madrid. Definitely, <laughs> right? that, that's Before something you go that to your we can. Regions. Yeah, that's something that we can definitely arrange, and then um we can like you know uh, host maybe like like uh, from what we discussed earlier like the Christmas uh party, mm -hmm. and then we Filipinos or like basically everyone who celebrates Christmas we can uh, gather around and just like you know uh, like be there for each other so that we won't feel homesick and so that we can celebrate the uh, Yuletide season together so it's it's amazing <laughs> terrific I am really looking forward to it and hopefully your visas are already approved yeah <laughs> that's also what I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to 
as long as uh, we have the the so complete document. Thank you documents. so much, Angelo, yeah. for this opportunity. Yeah, thank yes, you so exactly. much. Exactly, that's it. Mm. The complete documents. The complete documents. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Clarice, and um, we'll we'll talk more. We'll talk more soon. Um, once we get to Spain, we'll definitely probably have an uh, additional episode where we finally meet in person and just um, you know, uh, maybe we can uh yes. like go to com uh compost uh. Santiago de Compostela together? <laughs> Santiago de Compostela? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we can go there together if you want to. And yeah. before you go to your designated region, let's first let's first have your first Tumadi at Tumadi Algo here in Spain. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yes. The the octopus. <laughs> okay, But... so let me know of where it Do you have any questions or things I can help with? Yeah. I am mm -hmm. I am open to it, so do not hesitate to ask. Okay, so Looking forward, Angelo. Thank you so much Thank for you this so opportunity. Much. Thank you so much. So that's it, folks. Um, if you have any inquiries or comments, uh, don't hesitate to uh, comment below in this video. And we will also be putting... Uh, resource links on the description below this video. So once again, thank you so much, Clarice. And uh, good luck to everyone who are interested in joining the program and have fun in Spain. And yeah, uh, hasta luego, hasta pronto, and gracias. Vos vemos. Vos vemos, <laughs> Filipinos. <laughs> gracias. Gracias. Chao, chao.